It's just so cool, I'm running trains outside. This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without them. And if you'd like to join the Patreon community, you can follow the link in the description below and join for as little as $1 a month. This has been my summer project. It is a small garden railway. It's not one of those backyard spanning leviathans that you may have seen somewhere else, but it's been a ton of fun to build. It's been a fantastic family project if you're looking for something like that outside. And if you have enough time to put away, you can do this in one weekend. So let's check out the whole project. This is an overview of the entire project. Now I have done three videos that go into great detail on building this garden railroad and they will all be linked at the end of this video as well as a complete playlist of all my garden railroad videos. This garden railroad was designed to be manageable. It takes up an 11 by 6 foot space off the side of our back patio. I did have to build the bed from scratch. One of my wife's requirements was that I build a bed with a low retaining wall. I accomplished this by stacking stones. The ground only dropped about 3 inches from top to bottom, so it would not be compensating for much of an elevation change. I dug the trenches and lined those with stone for drainage and then paver sand for leveling. This way water could naturally work its way out into the soil and the yard. This combined with the loose stacked wall means that it should be fine in terms of drainage, but I'm going to keep an eye on the plants to see if they have any rot going on and if I need to add any additional drainage. And of course I did seal the wall on my house where the bed comes up to it. I filled the bed half with simple fill dirt and compacted it down. Then I did the same with garden soil. I did a lot more compacting than I normally do with regular flower beds like this because I need the base that the track sits on to be firm, but I also need the ground around it to be firm as well so the track only shifts minimally. Now, one of the not so smart things that I did with this is I built it during the summer. If I had gone back, I would have built it during the spring because it was really hot when I built this. This is gonna take a while, so I'm just gonna cut to when I'm done. And it was also in the middle of a heat wave and I live in the southeastern United States, so it was hot and humid and muggy. And so I took a lot of breaks. And the one thing that was really important is that I had to stay hydrated, which is why it took me a little bit longer because I was taking all those safety precautions. But one thing that really helped me get back quicker were these liquid IV hydration packs. These are really, really awesome. This is the passion fruit flavor. And I love these. Um, they come in these little packs and you pour them in your water. They have this technology. I want to make sure I get this right. Um, the cellular transport technology that lets you hydrate two to two and a half times faster than with regular water and they also have three times the electrolytes so these get you back going faster these got me back going faster so that i could actually get this series out when i wanted to so liquid iv hydration packs if you're looking for something just to make your water like give you more relief especially in the summer these things are absolutely awesome i have a discount code in the description below you just click the link and that'll give you a discount to buy on these so there you go liquid iv these things are amazing okay back to the Garden Railroad. For the train, I'm going to be using this starter set from LGB. This is their most affordable starter set. It comes with an 040 narrow gauge locomotive, two pieces of rolling stock, a power pack, and a circle of track. Once this was done, it was time to lay track. Now this involved digging a trench and filling it with ballast, and the trench was right around three inches deep across the board. The first thing that I did was kind of lay out my track in the general area of where I wanted it so that I could trace an outline and know where to dig the trench. The ballast I chose was simple driveway gravel. Now, this stuff is not to scale at all. If you're looking for something to scale, check out Chicken Grit, but that's a lot more expensive. This stuff looks great and the rocks are rough so they won't keep shifting once they settle in place. To put the ballast in the trench, I first put a weed fabric barrier underneath it so that no weeds grew up through the track. I then dumped in and smoothed out my ballast. Connecting the track was done through these rail clips from Trainly. There are several different variations. I really like these. They are not the cheapest things in the world, but once they are attached, they hold really well. 
I set about laying the track in sections, then clipping it together using those rail clips. Once that was done, I could finish ballasting the track. I hooked up the power to it, and then it was time to run the first train, which is always a big deal. Okay, the railroad portion of the project was complete. Now it was time for the garden portion. There's a couple of things to note about choosing your plants. One is to choose plants that thrive in your climate area and how much your sunlight the area you're going to plant gets. So for instance, I live in the southeastern United States and this particular flower bed is going to be getting more than six hours of full sun each day. So I need plants that are okay in the heat and I need plants that are full sun. Make sure when you plant also that you take into consideration the plant's maximum growth potential when it comes to planting in relation to your track. A lot of times garden railroads will use dwarf versions of plants for this specific reason. You don't want to have to be constantly having to trim back a plant that keeps growing over your track and derailing your trains. This is also the part in the project where I begin to add finishing it touches. To start, I placed a weed barrier down and then placed a pre-made waterfall, some various rocks, and a little station on a concrete paver. And here is the Garden Railroad. So the big question you might be wondering with this whole thing is price. How much did it cost me to build this? Well, it's probably less than you think. I should preface this all by saying that garden railroading is the most expensive little niche of model railroading. So you're not gonna be getting into doing it cheap when you do this. But that being said, I was able to build this entire project right here for under a thousand dollars. And what that all takes into account is some of the track I was able to buy used. Um, I did some smart buying with the materials. I used a mulch and dirt yard rather than going to a home improvement store. And I found deals on things like the water fountain I actually found for $50 off. So you can do something like this for under $1,000, which is in Garden Railroad terms is pretty dang affordable. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This has been a fantastic family project. If you wanna watch the detailed version of how to do this, I've got the videos right here as well as the whole playlist. So check those out. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe. Be kind and happy railroading. I'm gonna watch my trains.